Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Very glad you are here. Thank you for joining me in this wonderful day or night, wherever you are and whatever time you're listening to this. Today's topic is you care too much about what other people think because dot 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 teaser suspense wow i'm gonna tell you right away because i hate it when people will tease you in but they just won't tell you right away i always skip to the end or like want to hear the message so i'll tell you right away and uh you know if you want to click off and don't hear it, it's all good too uh it means this video is not for you so you're too concerned about what other people think because you are not your biggest fan and because you're not your biggest fan you're big your own biggest supporter you care about what other people think because you're seeking external validation. You, everything that you're doing, if this resonates with you and you feel that you're someone who is very susceptible to the opinions, to the influence, to the ideas of other people, of other sources outside of yourself, what I've discovered for myself is was because I was looking for a validation for my self-worth for me. And since I didn't have that self-worth and I wasn't supporting or validating myself, well, we all need love in this life. It's the essence of life, the most powerful force in the universe. And what happens when we don't get it or give it to ourselves, really, because that's the real key, we look for it from outside sources in a myriad of different ways. And we'll talk about these things. So you care too much about what other people think. And man, this sucks. How do you know you care too much about what other people think? Because things that other people do or say to you really negatively affects you. If you have low self-esteem, if you have low confidence, you're not secure in yourself, you don't really know who you are yet, you're still in the process of developing your identity or your new identity now that you've awakened and you've realized that all the trauma from the past had you being someone who you weren't didn't truly want to be or aren't truly that you were just this amalgamation of different masks that you wore as a result of how you grew up and how people treated you and what they told you but now that you've waken, you've woken up you realize that that's not who you truly are or who you want to be or you just didn't like who you want to be because it's not it wasn't it's not who you are it's not who you ever wanted to be you're way more than that and now you're waking up to the fact that that is the truth and you're in the process of transforming your life because of that. So this takes a lot of time, a lot of hard work, a lot of introspection, a lot of healing, a lot of crying, a lot of screaming, a lot of anger, a lot of rah, whatever, letting out all that negative emotion, a lot of grieving because you have to let go of what you didn't have in the past. You have to forgive a lot of people and forgive yourself. They were doing the best they could. You were doing the best they could. But it all comes down to crap. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I want. I become this person or realize that I was acting as this person, this mask that I put up as a result of all these things I had. You know, the dad that always um, told you you weren't good enough, you know, you're not gonna amount to anything or you're not smart enough or your mom, you're not pretty enough or all these things. You tried to become this person in order to get their love and approval so you became an overachiever, you're hyper successful now, you've accomplished all these things but you still don't love yourself, you feel lost, you have stress, maybe you have some uh, diseases or conditions that have manifested physically because your mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being has not been intact. But now you've woken up because the pain has been brought to your attention or it's been so great that now it woke you up and you have no choice but to change because you can't go back to the way things were. So you're still at the mercy of outside influences, especially the opinions of other people because you haven't developed and solidified your new identity yet. So you've got to become your biggest fan the reason you care about what other people think about you and you're so susceptible to the influence and opinions of other people is because you have not learned to love yourself and be your biggest supporter. And that term self-love, right, is the consciousness of the planet goes and it's become this like kind of buzzword and stuff, but it is true. And what that means to me anyways, it's becoming your biggest supporter, becoming your biggest encourager, you are the one who has your back and you'll know that if you're truly secure for a couple of reasons or you become that for yourself and again we'll jump into it you're not your biggest fan if you were you wouldn't need validation from other sources especially people you wouldn't care about what other people think negative or positive 
And here's the thing with that, you can say, oh, I don't care what other people think, I don't care. <laughs> but are you being real with yourself? Because we all do, no matter where you're at, right? I'm no different than you. Of course, I still care about what other people think at times. But as you go on the healing journey, you care less about it and you care more about how you feel about yourself. And that's where true confidence comes because you've healed through all this stuff. They don't know you, they don't know what you've been through and they don't know where you're going. But when you identify these things, <laughs> who you've been in the past, what you've healed, what you've overcome, and you've identified your vision and clarified what you've talked about and you know where you're going, other people's opinions do not affect you in any way, shape, or form because they don't know anything about you. They don't know where you're going. They don't know what you've been through. It's crazy, right? We wear these things, we do these things, project an image out to get approval from others, but we don't even know these people and we probably never will. And even the people that know you now may not really know who you truly are because you've been wearing masks, so you've been hiding it. You're barely discovering who you truly are. So how the hell can they know who you truly are? You're still figuring it out. This is the process of becoming. It's pretty crazy. It's nice to be acknowledged by other people, sure. We worked really hard, it's nice to get that credit, the acknowledgement, but if you rely on that acknowledgement, you're a slave to the opinions of other people. And the slightest remark or negative feedback can really mess with you and bring you down, maybe even send you into depression. It depends on what your level of security and self-acceptance and self-awareness is. You'll know if you're in a place of security because if it's uh, if someone gives you a compliment, for instance, you're able to fully receive it. And it still doesn't really affect you whether someone compliments you or not, whether it's positive in, a comp in the form of a compliment or it's criticism and it's negative, quote unquote, one and the same actually, but anyways, you get my drift. Neither one of them really affect you. That's how you know you're in a real place of security and awareness. If someone gives you a compliment, you can fully receive it. Thank you very much. You're very handsome. Thank you very much. You are beautiful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And you can really take it and receive it. Or are you somebody who's like, someone gives you a comment like, dude, you did a great job at that. And you immediately fucking go, oh yeah, you know, it was a, you know, I was just one of those things, you know, just, uh, I was able to get it done and, and you know, they helped me out and you can't really receive it. That's a sign. That's a clear sign. What do you do when people give you compliments? Are you able to truly receive it? Say, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Really receive it, receive that gift. Or do you deflect you, you like, wow, that was amazing. You did so good. Oh, it was nothing. It wasn't that big of a deal. You downplay it. You don't know your worth. You're not owning your worth. So you deflect it. Thank you very much. Not in an arrogant way. It's genuinely receiving it. Are you able to receive a compliment? It's the same as criticism. If someone criticizes you or gives you negative feedback and says, dude, you like, that was terrible, man. Like, or like, here's some things you need to work on. That's, that was just not ideal. Do you get really like brought down by it? Does it really affect you? Or are you like, huh, I didn't see it like that. Okay, definitely got to reflect on that. Thanks for the feedback. And you can genuinely receive the feedback. And we talked about self-awareness yesterday in the video, on the video yesterday. And that's when you know you've really grown when you can take negative, negative feedback or criticism, but not only are you recognizing that you're really upset by it or it really triggers you, you, you relish in that and you look for it and go, hell yeah, I'm triggered. That must mean it's something really true inside of me that I get to look at. And there's a breakthrough on the other side of that. There's huge growth because you own it. You search for those triggers. Hell yeah, trigger me, trigger me, get me upset. What am I upset about? That's within me. That's giving you an opportunity to heal something and elevate and grow. That's when you're really empowered. That's when you're like, hell yeah, let's do it. Here's the key. If someone gives you a negative feedback or criticism and it really hurts you and you're triggered by it, that is a clear indicator that's something that is within you that you get to heal. So that's a beautiful gift. It's a beautiful gift. You know who you are and what you've been through and where you're going. That's how you know you're in a place of really loving yourself, self-awareness and security. It's all it takes time, it takes time to develop. All of this comes from self-awareness. Again, referencing the video yesterday, self-awareness is the key to growing the self-study, self-reflection. This is how we learn about ourselves when we grow. That self-awareness and doing the work to heal the wounded parts of you is key. It's so important get what you want and to grow 
you'll know that you're healing and you're going through the process and that you've grown as a person and we're becoming your biggest supporter when things that trigger you that used to, they no longer trigger you. You've let go of that stuff, so it doesn't bother you. So someone gives you a, the same criticism now as they gave you six months ago. Six months ago, it really messed with you. A year ago, it really messed with you. Now, if someone tells you that stuff, you go, yeah, whatever. I got over that. Yeah, I've owned it. Yeah, that's part of me, and I've worked on it, and I feel fine. You'll know because when you heal, the same situations, people, and places, etc., that used to bother you, they simply no longer bother you. Or when you're faced with them, you don't react emotionally in the same way. You don't have the same thoughts. You see it from a higher perspective. You see it differently. You've elevated. You've grown. When you've elevated and you've grown, you've got to this place, those triggers, those things that used to bother you, they no longer affect you because you're literally vibrating higher. You're, you're literally at a higher energy frequency. And now that you're at a higher frequency, the lower vibrations can no longer affect you. This example, I thought of it so long ago, but for whatever reason, this is how my guides, uh, you know, the universe, whatever, the masters, they gave it to me. Imagine like a Coke can, like an aluminum Coke can. And imagine that it's covered with like thick mud. Okay. And that thick mud, it's like stuck on there. It's like caked on there. Right now, if it's a low vibration, you got all this thick, heavy mud. That's like dense energy. Right. And it's stuck on that Coke can. That Coke can is not moving at all. That lower vibrational energy is stuck because the can isn't vibrating. It's not moving. It's very low energy. What happens if we start to shake that Coke can? What happens to the mud? Little by little, it starts to fall off. So as you raise the vibration, the frequency and the, the frequency, the energy gets higher. Those lower vibrations, that heavy energy falls off. It falls off the can. What happens when you're really vibrating at a crazy level? Like, whoa, you're super high energy. All that negative energy just falls off you. Anything that tries to stick, it immediately falls off you. That's you. You're elevating, you're vibrating higher and higher. As you heal, you become your biggest supporter, your biggest fan. The negative vibrations, i.e. negative opinions, thoughts, beliefs, behaviors of other people being projected onto you, they just can't even mess with you because you're vibrating at such a high level, your frequency is fast. That energy is high. Those low vibrations literally can't even stick to you because they're moving. The opinions of other people, the thoughts, behaviors, projections that other people put on you. This is what healing is. This is what elevating is. This is what you are doing. And you become so empowered and you reach these thresholds. Do you ever get there? No, maybe. Then you're enlightened. Then you're in Samadhi. Then you're in Nirvana. Then you're in heaven. Whatever religion or belief system you go to, to me, they're all the same thing. Samadhi, heaven, the kingdom of heaven, Samadhi, Nirvana. Um, gosh, I'm missing a couple of them. Anyways, states of enlightenment, right? You've reached the highest level. Then then you're off to the next planet. You're off to the next lifetime. You fulfilled your lifetime, but you're not there yet. Neither am I. We're human. That's why we're here. We're talking about this stuff. Vibrate higher, baby. Baby girl, baby boy. Get that energy high. Heal yourself. That negative stuff can't even affect you anymore. It just falls off. It can't even touch you. It's not even a thought in your mind because you're vibrating at such a high level and so focused on your vision. It can't mess with you. It literally just can't energetically. Again, the Coke can. Imagine a Coke can going, going crazy. Imagine trying to throw some dirt on there. It can't even, even dust can't even stick to it. That's you. You're elevating. So are you your biggest fan is the question. How do you talk to yourself? Kindly, positively, encouraging, supportive? Or do you have negative self-talk? Little slips like, oh, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have done that. You're not an idiot. But if you say stuff like that, yes, you're joking. Oh, I didn't really mean it. Yes, you did mean it like that. And that's your subconscious coming out and speaking to you verbally in a conscious way. So you're not your biggest fan because you really do think that. I never say crap like that to myself. I never do. As a matter of fact, when I'm feeling down, and this is where this video comes from today, I was in a funk this morning. I just, you know, we're humans. We're going to have days where we just, you know, it's so funny. Yesterday I was feeling so good and I was like, I'm so in alignment, man. I'm so clear. Like, I feel so good. Let's do this. And today I just woke up in a funk, a little down on myself like and I was like what did what is this this is why I went into the coffee shop as I do and reflected and journal and like what's going on man I was able to acknowledge some things and bring some things from the lightness to the dark and then rephrase that understand within myself why this is happening how am I talking to myself how am I viewing these situations negatively because the only reason you ever feel bad is because you're not in alignment with your higher self 
and your ego's kicking in to bring you down and you've got to practice, become aware of that and reframe, which is what I did and now here I am, I feel great. About to do this video with you guys and then we're going into the gym, it's all gravy. You go out to a nice dinner tonight, that's it. So how do you talk to yourself? You must first become aware of your thoughts. This is why meditation is so important. Sitting in silence, alone, in stillness, gives you the opportunity to observe your thoughts. If you have nothing but negative thoughts and you can't sit back and you observe them, you immediately think about you know, um, your boss being an, an a-hole at work the other day and you can't get over it and you're like, God, I hate it, but you've already, they're already affecting you negatively. You're supposed to acknowledge that thought and go, okay, my boss is an a-hole. Okay, it came up. Okay, gotta pick up little Katie from school. Okay, go pick up Katie, thought goes by. You observe them. The second you go, my boss is an a-hole, and you go, yeah, they're an a-hole. Oh, I hate them, here's why. They did all these things wrong. This is how they're talking to me, blah, blah. You're no longer observing. You got carried away on that emotional train of thought. You literally got carried away on the train. Meditation is about observing. Once you meditate and you observe, now you can become aware of your thoughts. As you become aware of your thoughts, you're becoming aware of that self-talk also because you're becoming aware of you. That's the value of it. That's why we do this. Can you receive compliments? I already talked about that. Can you genuinely receive a compliment or do you push it aside? Say, oh no, it's no big deal. That was, an inc that was incredible. You did such a good job on that report. Oh my God, that was amazing. That was the best one in the class. Oh, you know, was, no, that was fine. Like it wasn't that, you know, it was whatever. And you downplay it. Your self-worth isn't there. You're not willing to receive. Does criticism or negative feedback bring you down? When someone says something, does it negatively affect you? Do you really take it personally? If you do, good. That's a trigger and you get to look at that trigger and by you looking at it and healing it, being at peace with the emotion and the feeling behind it, you heal it. And now the negative feedback and the criticism doesn't affect you anymore. Then when you really become into an empowered place, the negative criticism not only doesn't affect you, you look forward to it. You look forward to being triggered because it's an opportunity to heal because you recognize that's pain within you that gets to come out. Something attached to it, some belief. Do you celebrate your accomplishments? I have this client or this uh, old client I used to work with. He's literally at the top of this field in the entire world. He's a professor at a major university. He's written countless books. He gets invited to talk to the seminars on his subject. He's an incredible person in his field. He would write these books and go to these lectures and get all this recognition would literally just brush it aside not relish in his accomplishment all just moving on to the next one and we talked about it and I told him that's a trauma response you feel like you're never good enough so anything you do is never good enough so you don't relish in your accomplishments it's just on to the next one because you still have something to prove is that you or when something good happens do you really take time to acknowledge yourself how far you've come the work it took and the achievement and sit there in it I graduated college, I didn't really care at all. Graduated high school, I didn't care at all. Got a good job, didn't care at all for a while, right? I realized it was trauma. I didn't think I was good enough still or I was deserving of the things coming to me. It's all self-worth. All leads back to a few of the key qualities. Self-worth, your self-worth, your self-worth. Your self-awareness of that self-worth and how it interacts. It's all the same things, we just talk about them in different ways. You have to be your biggest fan. It's all about that self-talk. How do you talk to yourself? You have to clear, that's number one. Number two, you have to clear everyone's negative shit that's projected onto you. Their thoughts, their feelings, their energy, their situations, the dirty look, the gossip, all their crap. Vibrate higher, man. You ain't worried about all that. And if you are, get in touch with why you are and heal it so it doesn't affect you. You can't avoid it. If you say, oh, I don't care about them, they're stupid, whatever, I don't care what they think. Oh, you actually really care what they think. Not only do they really care what you think, now you're screwing yourself because you're shoving it down, you're repressing it, it's only gonna get worse, you're gonna get more sensitive. It's not how you do it, guys. You have to acknowledge it. You have to be brutally honest with yourself. Clear everyone's negative stuff. We talked about energy clearing. How do you do that? You meditate, you write, you journal, you reflect, you heal, go to therapy if you need to, go out in the ocean, go out in nature, cleanse your aura, be mindful of these things. But you really gotta get, the real work is getting in touch with your thoughts, your feelings and emotions. That's the real work. That's all therapy is. It's just giving you an opportunity to speak openly and freely in a safe place so you can express things you wouldn't normally express to other people. 
but you can do this with yourself and it's even cr more powerful when you can do it. If you need facilitation, go for it, do it. Do what you need, whatever you need, honor that. But you can do this and reflect. You just gotta be willing to be brutally honest with yourself. It's challenging, it's different. Third thing I'll say about that, it's a daily practice. Like I said, I was in a funk this morning, now I feel incredible. I'm gonna go get this awesome workout in and go get a good dinner. I was in a funk, but I did the work today. I put the work in, I said, what is it, what would, what would do I need to do? What am I not addressing? Why am I like this? Let's go do some work. Let's go reflect, let's go write about it. What are the situations in my life? What am I feeling triggered at? What is the emotion? What is the feeling? Where is this coming from? What's it connected to? Okay, what are my beliefs about that? What do I need to do? How can I reframe this? Self-reflection is the key. It gives you all the answers you need and all the healing once you go in there. Most people don't want to though because they got a whole load of lifetime of crap that's really intense, that's really severe, that's really painful, so they just avoid it. But the crappy thing is, if you avoid it, it just gets worse and worse. There are a couple other quotes. I'll say these. They're not the ones I wrote down. Most men leave, live lives of quiet desperation, especially as men. We're taught not to feel emotions, get in touch with our feelings and stuff. Because we're, you know, you're a pussy, you're a little bitch, all that stuff. And that's just the negative programming. And that people that say that are the most insecure men, the most scared. The loudest, biggest dude is the most scared and insecure. That's why he's like that, because he has to be in order to protect himself because he hasn't healed on the inside. If you're confident, you don't need, there's nothing to defend yourself from. You're fine. You don't, not, you don't take things personally. It's like, all right, man, whatever. You're able to easily identify the projections of other people. And when it's not a projection and they're giving you feedback and it triggers, you're able to recognize that, oh, I am triggered by this and be aware and own it. That's power. That's power. That's what it's about. Most men live lives of quiet desperation. The other thing is uh, most people, you know, die at the age of 20. They die, most people die in their 20s, but they live until, live to be old. And this is about numbing and suppressing emotions. Most people die and they get some trauma or something that happens and it stunts their growth mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, physically, probably, maybe even, and they never heal from it. And so they're stuck in this emotional maturity state of that trauma. Yeah, they've developed what's called a developmental arrest in, in psychology clinical psychology so you've got to go back and heal these wounds so that those developmental arrests those parts of you whether it's your emotions maybe your body your mind your spirit your emotional maturity you're stunted at a growth level because you haven't healed that trauma so you have a developmental arrest you weren't able to, to develop and you never have you've just grown older but you're still emotionally mentally at this level you have to go back and heal those parts of you so you can continue your growth most, some most people are they stick in jobs they hate they don't think it's possible they never remarry they you know life goes on etc cetera, etc cetera, right people just get stuck and they never heal or move forward because they didn't go back and heal that's what this is about you gotta be your biggest fan you gotta be your biggest fan and you gotta do it because you gotta heal yourself and you gotta support yourself because no one's gonna care about your vision as much as you care about it so when no one is supporting you how are you gonna feel there's a lot of things with that. One, if no one's supporting you and you stop doing it, well, then you probably weren't doing it for the right reasons and it probably wasn't really your vision. You were doing it for your ego. It's after you stopped getting validation, you stopped doing it because no one's giving you validation. But it was the wrong vision, the wrong thing to do in the first place. That was me. It's crazy. Quotes. Be your own support system. No one's coming to save you and no one can do it for you. And you wouldn't want them to. And that's from me. Not even necessarily a quote, but that's from me. Be your own support system. No one's coming to save you. No one's going to do it for you. You wouldn't want them to do it for you. And sometimes nobody's going to cheer for you. But it doesn't matter. Your vision is yours. This is about you and the life that you want to live. Make it happen. And then the other quote I did write down, I love Mr. Do the late, great Dr. Wayne Dyer. You want some good stuff to watch and read and listen to. Go, go Google YouTube, Dr. Wayne Dyer, go read his books. He's incredible. He's been an incredible teacher to me. God bless, man. Rest in peace. You have to be unaffected by the good opinions of other people. You gotta be unaffected by the good opinions of other people. Let's pull a card for today. Three taps to clear the energy of previous readings. We ask for the purest, the most divine truth, my highest good, your highest good, and the highest good of all. 
What does Spirit have to say for us today? What message do you have to give about people got to have their own backs? Don't worry about if they're cheering or hating. It doesn't matter because you got your back. This is the one. We pulled this one before. I guess it's supposed to come up today. There's a better course of action. And actually, before I read this card today, what I also want to say is, you know, and I have to, I always, I'm always mindful of this, right? Because especially in the internet and especially as my channel grows, right? People's egos get triggered and they're like, oh man, you know, let me take it out of context and make it run. Don't take this out of context. I'm not saying the opinions of other people don't matter. You get to take everything with a grain of salt and discern for yourself and pay attention to what's going on. I'm saying don't be a slave to the negative or positive opinions of other people because you've got to be centered. I don't know. I felt the need to say that. Anyways, maybe that's something I need to look at. Am I defending myself? I guess maybe. So maybe I need to look at that. Ah, uh, yes and no. I just want to be clear in my communication because I know people like to take things out of context, uh, but I'm not here to argue or be right. You know, you can think and feel however you want to think and feel about whatever I say. If it resonates with you, great. If it doesn't, that's cool too. I'm not going to argue. That's what, that's you. Seven of Michael, two paths, discerning what the best path is for us. The path on the right or the path on the left. Am I still a slave to the good opinions of other people? Or am I confident, independent in who I am and self-aware that I'm comfortable enough walking my own path? That's what comes up for me. The road less traveled is the one that we're walking, Lightworker. The road less travel is the one that we're walking. It's not an easy one, but it's for a reason. You're here to shine the light as an example of what it means to heal and move past traumas and still be great. That's what you're here for. There's a better course of action available to you. Working alone may not be the best answer. Review all the details. Maybe you need a mentor. Maybe you need a coach. Maybe you need someone for your business to hire you as a uh, skill position. Maybe you need a therapist. Maybe you need a counselor, um, somebody in your life. Maybe the course of action that you're currently doing. Maybe you need to reevaluate your perspective or different methods. That's what comes up for me. Look at the details of the plan. Extended message for Seven of Michael. There's a better course of action available to you. Ask yourself, what am I really trying to accomplish? So what comes up for me is your vision. Are you doing your, are you pursuing this vision you have in your mind, this better life out of ego so you can get validation from others? Or are you doing it because it brings a sense of fulfillment and joy to your heart and your life and you know that this is your path? What am I really trying to accomplish? Think about whether working alone on this project is a good idea. Is your unique point of view providing creative solutions or is it causing you to miss important details? Go over the details again. Your angels want you to be a success in this endeavor and are giving you a heads up with this card. There's probably more going on here than meets the eye. Someone may have ulterior motives. The need for caution, poor timing, running away. So it brings up some opportunities for self-reflection for me. Angels trying to give me a heads up on my endeavors with this card. Probably more here than meets the eye. Not worried about someone having ulterior motives. But think about whether working on this project, working alone on this project is a good idea. The answer for me is yes, right now. Is my unique point of view providing creative solutions? Yes. Is it causing me to miss important details? Maybe. What details could I be missing? So see, like live right there, I'm just like, I'm asking myself these questions, tapping into my heart and really being honest. Am I missing important details? Would it be better for me to work with other people on the things that I'm working on? Maybe. What would that look like? What does my heart say? What does my intuition say? What does my, ma my mind say? What's a practical way to go about it? Constantly reflecting, constantly self-studying, constantly trying to improve my self-awareness to heal things that are blocking me so that I can manifest my vision. So my vision is crystal clear. It's been clear for 10 years now. It's changed and tweaked a little bit because I've healed some of the ego part of it. But um, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out because I'm detached, I'm let go. My intention is clear, but we'll see how the, all this happens. Love you guys so much peace, love, and so much respect and gratitude for you. I hope this resonated with you. If it did, please like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you like my vibe, like what we're doing here, and if somebody you know could benefit from hearing this message, please share it with them. Peace and love. See you next time.